Welcome to Solid Camp Professor. I'm Sydney, your Solid Camp Professor, and in this lesson we'll be doing part one of our lesson of pocket machining. In this part that we have on our screen, you'll see that we have two pocket operations that we must perform. One is from this level up until this level, which is basically just this contour area. And then the next one is from this level up until the bottom, which includes this contour plus these two islands as well. We'll start our operation by choosing the pocket operation. Now, when I go into my geometry, the boundary that I would like to pick will be actually this boundary around here rather than this boundary around here. We have to remember that the boundary only tells us the exact boundary that the tool will be going up to. It has nothing to do with the depth of the tool. Just a quick reminder. So I'll simply take this line over here, create a chain automatically around the part, accept that, and that'll be my entire geometry for this particular operation. Now the next thing I have to do is obviously choose a tool. The tool that I will be using will be a 10 millimeter end mill that will be going around the part itself. The next, I go into my levels. Now my upper level will be this surface over here and my pocket depth will be up until this step over here. Now let's go into our technology area. In our technology area, we'll start off with the type of cut that we would like to do inside our part itself. We have the first option that we have as the default really is contour where it actually works according to the shape of the pocket itself whether it can be from the outside in or from the inside out. Another option we have is hatch. Hatch simply goes back and forth in the part itself. There's one other option over here which can be useful sometimes. It's hatch plus finish. What that does is simple. The problem with hatch sometimes is that when you go from one direction, then go back to the other direction, and then go over, there's usually an area which leaves a little bit of a sharp corner over there which has to be machined out. So what the hatch plus finish does is simply after it finishes that pass, it'll simply go around once cleaning out all those sharp corners. In our case we're going to use the option of contour. Now as you go further down this area you'll note is grayed out. This is for a simple reason that there is no open pocket involved over here and this area deals only with the open pocket. Now complete Z level I will not need because I only have one uh, pocket, one chain pocket in my geometry itself. My next area is my overlap. My minimum overlap can be defined as a percentage of the tool or a value of the tool. I'm going to use the option of a percentage of the tool overlap. Now the overlap is how much actually overlap between one pass and the next. In other words, the bigger the percentage of the overlap, the smaller the amount that will actually be cut from the tool itself. In other words, 65% overlap will give me a 35% actual cut of material. Now, since this is my first rough cut, rest material chamfer has absolutely no uh, binding on this particular operation and I don't need it. Now let's go over to the next area. We have our offsets. In the pocket operations, I have, can have a wall offset from the wall, from islands, and from the floor itself. So I'll do a wall offset of say 0.3 millimeters. Islands, in this particular operation there is no island that I'm taking into account so I can leave that at zero. And the floor I'll leave that at 0 0.15 millimeters. Now in my finish area I would like to do a finish on the floor only with this tool. The next thing we have here is you'd fill it size. I will not be using that either. And the next thing I want to do is simply go into my link area. Now, in my link area, I have my ramping. Now, the ramping is as follows. If I choose none as my ramping, the tool will go straight in at the point from where 
where it has to start inside the material itself. If I were to do vertical, then vertical would say, okay, the tool is starting at a p specific position, and I'll put my part over a specific position, but I can say I want it to start over there instead. And then I'll simply say, okay. That's what vertical. But it should be noted that when I do vertical, that the tool will go from that area, once it gets to the bottom, straight to the area where it has to do its machining and then start its machining in that area. This is sometimes good when my tool is going down near an island or near a wall, and I don't want to be that close to the area when it goes down. Now, another option we have here is also angle, where I actually can control the angle of my dissension to go actually going down in an angle of the part itself and we also have helical where it goes in a uh, helical fashion into the part itself in this particular case right now I want to choose none going down actually directly in the area into the pocket where it has to start now I also have my lead out and I'll choose a lead out of two millimeters. It should be noted, however, that this value, even if I put a value in here that's too big, it will not actually crash into the wall. Say I were to say uh, have a lead out of 200 millimeters, which is of course ridiculous value. If I were to do save and calculate now and then do my simulation, you'll note, and I'll use the option of 2D simulation to show this, what I, to show this particular arc, I'll start by going down one step at a time and you see my tool is going around all the way around now when it gets towards the end you'll note the arc if it is 200 millimeters it would crash into the part what actually happens it automatically reduces itself until the point this where it can actually part one create of our arc lesson on pocket machine without Thank you for joining us, the Salakin Professor. Take care and have a nice day.